Hello everyone. This video is about basics of Visim, um, especially routing. So in Visim you can use different ways to route vehicles, but the simplest way to use static vehicle routing decisions. You can access that on the left side here. You just click on it. Um, there are also other modes you can select, but let's not go into those. So just select static. And um, with these static routes, you can set up vehicles um, route. Um, you can set up the proportion, how they turn, which lane they use, or especially make, yeah, which lane they use, how far in advance they know where to turn, and all these kind of things. So I have a very simple intersection here. It is a four-round one, and we are going to look at on the left side. Let's start there. I have already set it up. But um, to show, so you can just use these. It works like this way. So you can you set up a one decision, and from that decision you can set up a proportion on on which way, um, what proportion of the vehicle go that passes through this decision point. So this is the decision point. It's marked with this purple line, and all these light blue lines are. So these belong there. So you can access there by show list, static. Then we bring up the static vehicle routing decision uh, window here in the bottom. And here it will list all four ones that I have in the model currently. So as you can see, there is a left and the right side. And the left side is the decision points. It shows here decisions and also slash static vehicle routes. So on the right side, you have the routes. And here in this little window, you can also select that you want to see this static vehicle routes. So if I select the first one, you can see that first one is the north approach. The second one is on the east. This is the south and this is the west. For each, you can have multiple uh, routes set up and within each route you define the proportion. So let's place one. So I just delete it. I collect it. <laughs> then I hit control, hold on, hold down the control and then right click, it places it. And as you can see, as I move my mouse, it moves the first route. So now I put that route to the left and I left click here. The next one, it keeps holding the selection and I can select multiple routes. I set the other one here and the last one here. Then it still keeps it, but I just left click somewhere else, someone not on a link, just somewhere in a, in a, on, a, on the background. This way I deselected it. So now I can Look at it more, more detail. So the order, how you place these routes, doesn't matter. You can place uh, them as um, the way you want. It matters where you place the decision point because vehicle will learn about this route or their future path or the future route when they pass this decision point. So it is wise to keep it as far back as possible. You don't want to keep it very close to the link. Um, so you need to leave a little bit of time for vehicles to actually enter the network and have at least one step. So keep a couple of meters, it's good practice. However, the, um, the route, this light blue marker, that it doesn't matter where you put, uh, where you stop it. It matters only in those cases where you have a new intersection downstream. So let's say you have a link or so like a connector going off from here. So let's say um, you have um, like an access or a site access here. So I make a connection there. So this is a site access. So in this case, it matters because vehicle vehicles always need to be routed through their whole journey. 
Otherwise, if there is no root, so where you see the yellow, that is their root. If there is no yellow somewhere, vehicles will take the first connector they find. So everyone will take this connector and go out your model. So in this case, what you want to do, if you also want to have a proportion here, that you stop all routes here. As you can see, all of them stops there from every movement. And you create a new one here. Like that. Because there is no connector here, I also leave a little bit of distance, so at least one time step can occur. And then in the next, next time step, they will pick it up. You also get warning messages if you place routes or these decisions very close to connectors. So if you place these, um, like, uh, like here, you would probably get an error message, or not an error, a warning message that is too close, and it might, vehicles might skip it, because it's just too close, they might drive over it in within a time step, and also it would be too late to see them to change lanes if they are in the wrong lane. Um, on this side, you can see I modeled it with two different links. So it's a it's two lane link. So here it is a two lane link, and here it's two one lane link. So in this case also, if I just show you how it's done there, so I select the decision point, it highlights it here. And there you can see that that goes that way, this goes that way, and that goes that way. So you can guide vehicles through, and also always make sure that the vehicle has a routing through that whole journey, so it stops there and that goes from there. It is also very useful to know that a decision point, a decision point, not a route, a decision point can be assigned to certain vehicle classes. And so if I untick this all vehicle type tick box, then I can select different vehicle classes. So I can say I only want cars to use the decision point. So if a heavy vehicle comes, or a different vehicle class vehicle, then it will not see this decision point. It will be like uh, for that vehicle, it would look like nothing. So there is nothing there. So make sure that if you do this, um, you do multiple uh, decision points. So you do one there for cars, and then you do a different one. Um, or you can just, let me delete them. Or you can just duplicate it and you can set this for heavy vehicles, for example, or buses. Um, so this way you can set the route up. But how you define the proportion, so when you select it, depending on how many time periods you have, <laughs> assuming that you have a time period for every 10 minutes, then it will be shown here. You can set up the time intervals by going to base data time interval. And here in this little drop, uh, drop list, you can select vehicle routes static. And you can set here up as many time intervals as you want by clicking this add button and setting up the start. Mm. So if you go back here, you have these relative flows for each time period. For 0 to 600 is 0 to 10 minutes, then 10 minutes to 20 minutes, and so on, because 600 second is 10 minutes. The relative flow is, imagine it like a proportion. So you can use just like 1, 2, 3. That will mean that in total it is uh, six. So one sixth of the vehicle will go to the left. Uh, two sixths or one third of the vehicle will go straight, and half of the vehicle three slash six. So fifty percent of the vehicle will go right. And if you take this as an example, so if you want to set how many vehicles turn there. Um, you can see that from here, we only allow like one third 
sorry, one sixth of the vehicle to turn left. And after that point, in this routing decision here, we have a 50 50 split, so 1 1. So that 50% split will apply to all vehicles, apply to the vehicles coming from here and turning right. It will also apply to vehicle coming from the south, there, all vehicles. And the good tip that when you um, use these static routes, you can just put the actual vehicle number. So if you know that in this vehicle input, Let's say in the first 10 minutes you have a thousand vehicles. Then you know that only 200 goes left, 600 goes through, and the rest goes south. Then, then what you do is you just come here and put 200 because 200 goes left. Then, uh, let's say 600 goes right, sorry, straight. And the rest is the rest 200 goes to the right. It is very easy this way to understand because you know you have a thousand vehicle because that was in your um, vehicle input. A thousand vehicle. So we just basically put the number of cars there because it will be a proportion anyway. Just this way you don't need to calculate the percentages. So let's say you have 960 vehicles in the next period from 10 to 20 minutes, then you don't need to calculate like what is the proportion of 200 cars in 960, so you just put 200 there. Let me just do that example. So in the second time period, this one, again 200 goes left, again 600 goes right, but in this case only 160, because this is, um, that is 8, 9, 960, and we have 960 here. So it just makes it easier. So this way you can just be absolutely sure that the right proportion goes and you don't need to calculate um, when you have a traffic survey, you know that, you know, 200 vehicles go to left, whatever. You just basically put that vehicle count here and then you just summarize this up and then that uh, goes into the vehicle input. So that way it's very easy to set the model up without doing any calculations. Um, and I mentioned, so this is very important, that when you have this vehicle route, let me just delete this duplicate one, let not confuse us. And also, as you can see here, it shows, still shows 10, but since I ticked all vehicle type back, it's not applicable anymore. So it is considered for all vehicle type. So if I run the model, <laughs> Let me just increase the vehicle flow here so it will be more visible. So if I run the model, you will see that there, is a, there are lots of cars. And at some point, they will struggle to change lanes. So as you see, they, they start squeezing in in the last moment. So. And also, if I move this closer, they will not know where to change lanes. So they will basically start, they will be aware after this change. So you can see they have that indicator on when they got there. So that's, that's the point where they start to putting out their indicators. So it is important to move this up as far as you can reasonably do. And also it is good practice to make the link as long as you reasonably can in order to, and you try to capture the whole congestion. So if the congestion is this long, you want to keep that link at least that long, if not longer. And also important for these lane changes. So assuming that you put this, let's say, I don't know, this far away. But there are also lane changing um, parameters. So if you double click on connectors, and if you go to lane change, this is the distance 
they will start getting into that lane. So if I put 50 meter here, I put 50 meter here as well, and also 50 meter for the right turn. Sorry, like that. And then I put this decision point this far away, and that is 270 meter approximately. What you will see is Viku will know that they will need to take this connector, but they are not going to get into this lane. If they drive here, they will start to get into that lane when they are 50 meter upstream, so around this and that location. So if I run the model, you will see again then they arrive and then they will start changing lanes and the last moment basically as you can see. So they don't get into um, and you can see the indicators out but not before. So it is very important to provide as much distance as possible before the intersection but also be realistic so if vehicles don't get into their lane early then you shouldn't set these distances and these decision points very very far back so it's good that you you observe what's going on and then you if you are on a motorway for example where the signs are located so just be mindful um how to set these up but basically that's it um so i think it's very simple to use you just need to understand these two basic principles and then you should be fine thanks for watching and see you in the next one